just going to read one scripture and hopefully I'll touch on some of the story. I don't know. Let's we'll see. But if you'll turn with me to John. Chapter 9. John chapter 9 and verse 4, and I'm reading from an NIV translation. It's a familiar passage. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no man can work. And if you'll just hang with me for a minute, and hopefully it'll make sense to me and it'll make sense to you. I just want to talk about it's game day. It's game day. Anybody that knows me knows I'm not really a big sports person. I come from a family of sports nuts, and I'm talking about tennis and golf, and they probably watch high lie and soccer. I don't know. All the sports. That's not me. I think by default, I have learned to tolerate sports, not necessarily love them. And so on Sundays, during football season, even if I'm not with my family, football's on at our house because, you know, by default, there it is. Now, let me be honest and say, I watch football for a very different reason than a lot of other people watch football. Let me just say that I'm not all the way saved. I'm like a work in progress. You know, God is still, I'm under construction. So I watch football for the men. Now, let's just be honest. Look, I'm just going to be honest. Because I feel like there's freedom in the truth. So, I usually root for the team who has the finest quarterback. <laughs> or whose team I think is, you know, the, the most attractive. I like the Steelers because I think Mike Tomlin, Tomlinson and Tomlinson, I think he is so attractive to me. So, I'm a Steelers fan. You know, I like the Packers because Aaron Rodgers. I mean, dark hair, blue eyes. Come on now. But here's the thing. I love football because I grew up in a family that loves football. How many of us love Jesus for the same reason? How many of us love Jesus by default because we were raised, and the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And so our parents trained us to love Jesus. <laughs> So I get excited about football sometimes, you know. I really get excited about Super Bowl. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. But again, for very different reasons. Because my family, we eat on Super Bowl Sunday. Now, you can't give a holiday with no food. And in our house, the Super Bowl is a holiday. And you know, curvy girls like food. So I'm all about the Super Bowl. It's, it's, it's good. And the Super Bowl has a different kind of excitement. Yes. Because even if you're not a football lover, most of this country at 530 will be parked in front of the TV yeah, watching the Super Bowl. Yeah. Whether you're wanting to see the national anthem, whether you're wanting to see the halftime show, or whether you're excited about this red and gold matchup with the 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. So I know a little bit. I know a little bit. I know who's playing today. I know what time the game starts, because that's what time dinner is served. That's all the reason why time dinner is served. <laughs> There's a different kind of excitement on the Super Bowl. And so, most of us wake up with the thought of, it's game day. It's game day. And so, when we look at this passage of scripture, it was the Sabbath day. And you weren't supposed to work on the Sabbath. And yet, Jesus had been working and came across a man on the Sabbath that needed a little help. And I'm sure in his mind, Jesus thought, it's game day. Because it really didn't matter what day it was. But I have a, in my imagination, I feel like Jesus probably woke up every day excited to say, it's game day. Today something good is going to happen. And so I just want to talk a little bit about game day. And hopefully by the end of this, we'll all realize it's game day. So before the big day, before games, and, and even before the regular season, there's practice involved. Right, right. And so Jesus had been practicing up until this day. He had been performing miracles. He had been working. It wasn't strange to him. Yeah. And a lot of times we get to game day with no practice, and then we wonder why we can't make it yeah. through the game. Right. Yeah. Jesus knew his time was at hand. And so Psalms 119 and 11 says, I have given your word in my heart. 
that I might sin against you. And so the way we practice is we know the word of God. Yeah. That's the only way we can win on game day. Yeah. Practice doesn't make you perfect. It makes you prepared. Yeah. We have that mentality that, oh, if I do this enough times, I'll get perfect. No. What practice does is it teaches you what is called muscle memory. Yeah. And it teaches your muscles to respond automatically so that there's very little thought in what you're doing. Yeah. Quarterbacks practice passes hours and hours and hours at a time. Because when you're in a game day situation, you don't have time to try to figure out how to throw the ball and whether the ball's going to spin or which way it's going to go and blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm going to tell you all know about the technicality. So if I'm wrong, somebody stop me after church. But what I do know about quarterbacks is they practice throws and drills all the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's so that when they get to the game, they can make those split-second decisions. Yeah. Yes. How many of us are practicing on a daily basis with the Word of God? How many of us are praying on a daily basis with the Word of God? So that when the game day comes, we don't have to think about it. It's automatic. David said, I hear your word in my heart so that when it comes to game day, I don't have to think. I can just draw on your word. The greater is he that sent me. See, I have some things that when I go through things, I draw on. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. I don't need a Bible to tell me what Jeremiah said. I already know what Jeremiah said. And that's because when I get to game day, ain't nobody got time to be thinking, God, are you there? You told me you know the plan. So we got to train our muscles. We got to train our mind to respond on game day. Yeah. The second thing we have to do is we have to cross train. Now, here's the technical part of football that I don't know well, but I know a little bit. And left to be dangerous. <laughs> There's an offense and a defense. And the offense job is to catch the ball and get it to the end zone. Yeah, right. And the defense job is to stop the ball from getting it to the end zone, right? right. 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 So the offense trains with the offense, and the defense trains with the defense. Yeah. Now, there's some other folks, and there are some special teams. I don't really know what they do, but they have a job. There's a kicker there. Maybe he's on special teams. I don't know. Y'all can tell me after church. What I do know is this. If you're on the defense and you don't know how to catch the ball and run with the ball, shame on you. It's not just an offensive job. So we have to cross-train to win this game. And it's the same in the Church of Christ. We have to cross-train. We can't just know how to sing. We can't just know how to direct. We can't just know how to preach. you got to know some stuff in the Lord. we got to train for some other stuff because it's not just one way that the enemy is going to attack. Right. Yeah. So sometimes I'm on the offense and I have the ball. And God is giving me everything I need, and all he wants me to do is run into the end zone. But sometimes I'm on the defense. Yeah. And my job is to block. Well, how do I block? I block through prayer because things are coming at me all the time. And so it's my job to be praying those things away, to block the enemy from getting to me. And sometimes my job is to tackle because sometimes I'm in the midst of sin, and I have to tackle it. I have to stop it where it is. Sometimes my job is just to run. And God has already given me the ball, and I'm just supposed to run with it and go wherever he tells me to go. And sometimes it's to catch because he's got some blessings just for me. But all I got to do is open my arms and receive that catch. Sometimes my job is to throw. And that's to throw a blessing to somebody else because we are not just here to catch blessings for ourselves. Sometimes we got to give some of those blessings away. But I got to throw them away. And sometimes my job is to kick. And how do I kick? Well, I got to kick some folks out of my life. I got to kick some things out of my life because they don't belong to keep me from getting to the end zone. And you don't believe me, but ask David, was he cross-trained? Because David was a musician. Yeah. Right. And he was a warrior. Yeah. And he was a shepherd. Yeah. The Bible says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. Yeah. So stop limiting God. I, I can only do this. I can only do that. We all have multiple gifts that we can do to get us in this game yeah. called life. Yeah. Yeah. Be ready to play multiple positions. Yeah. Next, I got to get suited up. I can't leave parts of my uniform at home right. when I go out and play this game. Yeah. So, you know, both of my kids played football. Now, who was not a good football mom is this one right here. And so every game, we had to go through this series where we put all these pads on and had to put their shoulder pads on to keep their shoulders from getting broken. And they got 
pads around their waist and pads at their knees or whatever. All I remember is it took about 47 minutes in my mind to put all these pads on. It was the longest process ever. But if I didn't put it on, I was risking injury yeah. to my children. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing in the word of God. Yeah. Right. Ephesians 6 tells us, therefore yeah. put on the full yeah. armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, yeah. with the blessed plate of righteousness in place, with yeah. your feet yeah. fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Yeah. And in all addition to this, take up the shield of faith, yeah. which you can help extinguish the flaming arrows and put on your helmet of salvation and grab your sword of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times we try to play this game without any protective yeah. gear on. Yeah. And then we wonder why we get injured and why we get beat down and why we're all bruised and battered. But we step out without the full armor of God. So let me talk about me. And I'm real good to step out without the full armor. And the first thing that the mouth starts to work in and the neck starts to work in and... But see, here's the thing. People respond to the way I respond to them. Yeah. Then my feelings get hurt yeah. because I didn't put on the full armor of God right. before I stepped right. out. Right. And then I wonder why I come home every day battered and bruised and beat down because I didn't leave the right way. I didn't take the time in the morning to prepare myself for the day. The next thing we have to do is just play the game. Jesus did not come to be seen. He came to work. So let me tell y'all, see, I can talk about me because then I don't have to get in trouble with y'all. So let me tell y'all how I do. I get up in the morning and I say, Lord, prepare me for this day. And then I go sit on the bench because I'm afraid to get hit. And I'm afraid to get blocked. And I'm afraid to get off the bench because there's work to be done off the bench. So I sit on the bench in my pads and all I'm looking good in my uniform. My uniform looks clean. And I ain't going to work. But I know I'm not the only one. Y'all stop front. Y'all know good and well you put on your uniform sometimes and are afraid to go to work. Afraid somebody's going to say something to you. You're going to get into a fight on the field. So I'm just not going to go. I'm afraid I'm going to lose the game. So I'm just not going to get off the bench. I don't like the coaching staff. The line's not straight enough. Everything is not perfect. So I'm just going to sit on the bench until it's the right play for me. Like I just need this play to line up. Everybody got to be in position. And then coach, I'll get off the bench. Yes. Jesus could have sat on the bench on the Sabbath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be a rest day. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be a bench day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know a lot about football, but I know usually the day after a big game, they take a break. They have Mondays off and they watch training films or they do whatever, but they rest their body. And that was supposed to be the Sabbath. But Jesus on Monday after the big game, guess what he did? He got up and played another game. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to get up and play another game. See, it's easy to sit on the bench and say, I'm just resting. But I heard somebody say, you really can rest when you're dead. Now, I don't really want to rest just when I'm dead. I think God gives some rest. He talks about it. But he is telling us to get up and go to work. Get off of the bench. Colossians 3 and 23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart yeah. as working for the Lord and not human masters. Yeah. Yeah. So you know when you're done working, when you leave everything on the field? Yeah. I love sometimes doing events. I really don't, but I used to because now I'm old and I can't do them anymore. But what I loved about it is that all day long, I worked and worked and worked and worked. And when I left that event, I knew that I had given everything I had to make that day special. And how many of us can go to bed at night knowing that we did every single thing we could to make game day special? Because if you didn't, you're not doing it right. Right. If you don't leave every single thing you have at this church when you leave on Sunday mornings, knowing you have given everything to God and to this congregation, you're not doing it right. If you go to work every day and when you leave, you don't feel like you gave them 110%, you're not doing it right. If you go to school and you didn't give everything that you had, you're not doing it right. Because God did not call us to do things halfway. If he worked on the Sabbath, the least we could do is work on game day. Here's the thing, and this goes back to the cross training. You got to look for the 
opportunities to work. Yeah. See, a lot of us want the ball to just come to us. Yeah. We just hold our hand and say, okay, Lord, just let me catch it. Yeah. Sometimes you got to look for the fumble. I know a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes somebody else drops the ball, yeah. and you got to be there to pick it up and carry it. Because their drop ball is your play. And it's up to you to take it into the end zone. So just because I'm on defense, if I can't catch a fumble ball, shame on me. Get off the field. Yeah. Sometimes somebody else drops the ball, and I say, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. If the door opens, be ready. Yeah. So what if I miss my chance? What happens if I miss my chance? Well, God is so awesome, he'll give you another chance, and another chance, and another chance, and another chance. And it may not be the same chance. See, I can't ever go back and pick up that fumble. That fumble is gone. But that doesn't mean it's not another fumble with my name on it. See, we say God's got a blessing with my name on it. Somebody else's name may have been there first, and he just erasing it to put your name there. Sometimes we want a brand new blessing. God said, I'm going to recycle some blessings for this for you. In an earthly sport, your career is going to end. Every football player is going to retire at some point. Your body just is not made to take that kind of abuse. But until we leave this earth, our career is never ending. We're gone. We always have a job to do, and it's always game day. So just in case you fumble and drop the ball, just in case you missed some good plays, just in case you ran the wrong play, I done ran some real wrong plays. Don't worry. Tomorrow is another game day. How do I know? Because Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, because of the Lord's great mercies, we are not consumed. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So every day is a new game day for you. Every day you have the opportunity to take advantage of God's mercy and say, God, today, put me in, coach, because I'm ready. Why should I not be afraid to play? Because victory has already been promised. You've already won the game. See, when the 49ers and the Chiefs take the field today, we have to wait till until 1030 to try to figure out who's won. But we've already read the end of the story, and we already won. I don't have to wait. I know I'm victorious in Christ. John 10 and 10 says, I pray that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That means I already won the game. I already have abundant life in Christ. So don't give up. You should expect a great comeback. So you fumbled the ball, so what? Expect to come back. So you dropped the ball, so what? Expect to come back. You ran the wrong play and took the wrong route, so what? Expect to come back. The greatest comeback in NFL history was the New England Patriots, coached by Coach Bill Belichick, in the 19-something Super Bowl, 1997, I think, maybe. I don't know, 2007, somewhere in there. <laughs> and they came back from a 28 and 3 deficit yeah. Yeah. to beat the Atlanta Falcons 34 to 28. The winningest coach in NFL history was Don Shula. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fact. He had 328 wins. Yeah. Okay. In my opinion, the greatest coach of all time is Coach Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. I love me some Jimmy Johnson. See, I told you I know a little bit enough to be dangerous. But here's the thing. All of those are facts and opinions. The greatest coach to ever live and to ever have the greatest comeback is Jesus Christ. Because he went to Calvary just for us. And on the third day he rose and everybody thought he was dead, but he made the greatest comeback in all of history.
He won. The blind man won yeah. because he gave him the sight. But the parents won too because they had been taking care of him. Yeah. So they didn't have to take care of him anymore. And the witnesses won because they got to experience the miracles of Jesus Christ. And Jesus won because he gave glory to the Father and the Father got glory from the miracle. So in this team, we all win. There's no competition here. Just because I make it, you can make it. And you can make it and you can make it. If we are on the same team, we all win. So what am I trying to tell you today? I'm trying to tell you to keep playing. Keep playing at this game called life. It doesn't matter what day it is because every day that you wake up is game day. And the game ain't over till the clock runs out. Jesus knew regardless of what day it was, he had to heal. And the scripture says we must heal. We must work. He didn't just limit it to himself. Somewhere in the Bible, and I'm not great at quoting scriptures, but it says greater things you will do than I did. Yeah. And so we have a bigger job to do than even Jesus did. We have the opportunity to impact so many people as we walk this walk. Yeah. But we can't walk the walk sitting on the bench. Amen. We can't walk the walk if we don't show up to play. Yeah. We can't walk the walk if we don't put our gear on and get right. ready to play. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. However, it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared to those who love him. You never know if you're on the one-yard line. You never know if you're at the edge of your touchdown. And if you stop playing the game, you can't get the touchdown. So there's great things in store in the end zone. And if you stop playing, you never make it to the end zone. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged today to suit up. I'm encouraged today to keep practicing. I might be on the one-yard line. I might be on the five-yard line. I might be on the 50. But what I do know is there's an end zone with my name on it. And I'm expecting great things. If you don't know what team you're playing for, if you don't know who your coach is, I invite you to this altar today. If you're ready to give up, if you refuse to get off the bench, if you think you're at the 90th yard line and maybe you're not, I still invite you to this altar. Yeah.